It's been a crazy story. Like, uh, you know, I started making YouTube videos in 2014, I think, um, just to, in my garage, which t I'm in my garage now, but um, just putting electric skateboards together and like trying to work out how to make motor mounts. And like, uh, like looking back, it was all pretty simple stuff. But the thing is, there was no one else on YouTube making, there was, put it this way, you could go into YouTube and type how to build electric skateboard and there was nothing. Yeah. There was like, there was no proper tutorial. So I thought to myself, well, that could really help a lot of people out. You know, if I just made a video that was like step by step and that's what I did. And, you know, um, and then, yeah, I went down the rabbit hole of becoming an entrepreneur and starting up businesses and developing hardware. And, and, and you know, recently, unfortunately, that my first um, enterprise that I created, Inertion, did, I had to close it down. It, you know, it got to a point where it was not viable. And, but, yeah. we, you know, we, we must go on, right? Live and learn, right? Yeah, that's a yeah. very interesting, I think, I mean, for me, it's very interesting, and I'm sure there's a lot of people like me, because I've gone that route, the same route, where I, you know, back in the day, I, I wanted, a, I was working at some dumb job, and I just wanted to get out of there, I wanted to do something fun, something I enjoy, and then I figure out that I wanted to do videos, and I want to do production, but I didn't, I couldn't afford the gear, so then I was like, well, let me make my own gear, you know, let me come up some stuff. And then next thing I knew, I was I had a business doing that, making like little yeah. tripods and little just stuff, right? Like gear for yeah. the filmmakers. And then, you know, we did that for like five years. But then I'm like, you know, that this is the whole thing. It was like kind of a, like a bubble, right? It's a bubble yeah. market. And it was my first time doing a business and I couldn't I couldn't see that I was inside of a bubble. I thought, oh my God, this sales are coming in like crazy, like more than I can handle. This is gonna keep going on forever. You know, and yeah. so I was like on this grow, 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 you know, mentality. Yes, hire someone else. We need help doing this thing. We can't get them fast enough. Hire someone else, you know, and then next thing I know I had a giant crew. <laughs> yeah, man. And yeah. And I it gets stuff. away from you in multiple countries across the globe, different <laughs> languages, different time zones. Like I literally, I couldn't sleep at night because people who work for me in a time zone that is awake where I'm asleep, they have questions, they want help, they need th to know stuff. So yeah. it becomes, it's no longer a nine to five gig, it becomes 24 seven. I got two kids as well. Like I, I got a six year old and a four year old, which my, my boy was, was born the day, like the year I started Inertion. So he's the same age and grew up with that. And I'm meant to be a stay at home dad. You know, I was meant to be the guy that made sure he was brought up and looked after. And of course I did, I did that, but put the business on top of that, man. It was, it was a hell of a ride, I tell you. Yeah, oh, I can imagine. I never had employees like remote. I always just had here, right? We had a place and we would yeah. come in. But I do remember just thinking like how out of control it gets, you know, once you have like 20 employees and you, I just, I just couldn't, I never got a manager. I don't know if you went that route, like if you got a good manager to manage all of your teams and your people, but I never got one. And so I was like, I don't know these people. I would walk in here and go like, are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? You're like, I don't know. I'm only here for like a couple hours. And I'm running around doing my stuff and I'm trying to get everyone to do their stuff. Everybody was looking at me for answers, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, I couldn't pay attention to everything that was happening. And so I couldn't put my finger on, like, are we making money? Are we heading the right direction? Who knows? And by the time that yeah. I found out, I'm like, ah, oh, no, we're not making money. We haven't been making money for like a year, you know, and all the... All those assets that you accumulated, you know, through good time, through good years and, you know, prosperous times, they're all just are going out the door, right? You're paying a bunch of people that, you know, yeah. that you don't want to let go yeah, and, of. And, you know, and the same thing, it sort of happened with the electric skateboarding industry because, like you sort of said before, it was like a bubble. Well, I, I, I don't know if that's the correct term in electric skateboarding, but there was certainly a hype. I call it the hype cycle. So where everything's getting really 
everyone's excited and there's new technology and there's stuff that people haven't seen before and it's all happening and everyone's pumped up about it. And it's a natural cycle with any technology, I believe. You know, when you start looking into it, you see, I'm sweating, man. It's, it's hot in Australia, guys. It's like 30 degrees here. Um, but yeah, I, I think if you look at what happened with boosted boards, I mean, they raised, I think they raised like 70 million over a short period, you know, three or four years in board technology, raised, I think, you know, 10 or 20 mil in a similar time fashion. And those companies are gone. Like, where did that money go? You know what I mean? If I had had 70 mil, I mean, I could have done a lot with that money, but this is the thing. The hype gets to a peak. People realize, hmm, maybe this isn't what it could be, or there's disappointment. People get let down. There's a stagnation in innovation. Something happens and, and the hype cycle starts to sort of fall back down and people start to become more realistic about what the future might actually hold in terms of the technology. And, um, and I think that's where we're at now with electric skateboarding. So it will ramp up again and it will stabilize, but it, it wiped out a few people along the way.